Hey, welcome everybody to Crossroads Community Church. We are really glad that you're here this morning. We're glad that you joined us. Now, here's the thing. As promised, all right, um, today is a special day. Today is, it, you, we used to call it Family Communion Sunday, but today we're taking it up a notch. So it's Family Worship Sunday, which means, as you saw as you came in, uh, we had some kids who were passing out communion for you, and we've got some really cool kids helping us with announcements, and then there's going to be some folks up there singing. Our Bible reading is going to come from one of the children of the church today, and so I am glad you're here, and... Anissa is ready to start us off by. Good morning, Crossroads. Good morning. <laughs> um, my name is Anissa. This is Arian and my mom. <laughs> um, thank you for being here. All right, and we're going to come with some announcements. <laughs> Oh, and just make sure that everybody's awake this morning. That's, that's what we're going to do. All right. So we're going to come with some announcements this morning. So this Wednesday at 630 is a garden work night. So if you are available, we would love for you to come and help us with that. Um, Sunday, September 18th is back to church Sunday. So this is um, a Sunday where we just we all come back from the summer and we gathered together to celebrate with, what do you think? Ah, oh, potluck. We're good with the food. So it's a potluck picnic. So just come and enjoy and hang out with all of us. Annual Quest Party, a fall festival evening for grades three through five is October 8th, um, 6 to 9 p.m. Kids, bring your um, own pumpkin re already cleaned out. Flyer and sign up is at the children's ministry table. Save the date for the Crossroads Annual Trunk or Treat, Sunday, October 30th, after service. somehow is connected. Oh, I'm sorry. Wow. It's hard. I know. It's sorry. Hard, but I'm up here too. <laughs> connected somehow, whether you still like the paper or you're good on the computer. So we have lots of ways to get involved with our events, our groups, um, if you have any questions. So we've got the website, the weekly emails, the welcome table, which is through the double doors under the welcome sign. We've got our weekly emails. And we've got our website and our lovely sign and our um, Crossroads Facebook page, which is Crossroads Church and the church app. And then if you would like weekly emails, um, again, and have questions, you can email us at info at ecrossroads.net or you can fill out your call of faith form in your bulletin that you got when you walked in this morning. And now I believe, where is she? It's called to worship. So here so. we go. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right, so if you would stand for our call to worship. The refrain today, the refrain today is Jesus is, all right? So practice it with me. One, two, three. Jesus is. Oh, you're good. Come and worship Jesus Christ, the visible image of the invisible God. Jesus is the firstborn of creation, the eternal God. Jesus is the one through whom all things were created and in whom all things are held together. Jesus is the God of all. Let's worship our God together. No, wait, hold on, what? Go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't, I what? No, go, play. Oh, 
We always want this to be a place of freedom, so feel no obligation to participate in this part of the service. We are just glad that you're here. For those of you who do want to participate in the back, um, there's an offering box if you're in the room. And if you're at home, many of you have been, um, you know, mailing in your offerings or using the app or the website, uh, which, we, which we truly appreciate. And as we take our offering, uh, we always reflect on the words of scripture which is basically what I just said, right? Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under pressure, for God loves a cheerful giver, all right? So we use this as a time to celebrate all the things that are going on in our community, and also to pray uh, for the needs of the community. But we've got some, we got some celebrations uh, today. So um, first one. All right, and so you remember a couple of weeks ago, we all celebrated uh, when uh, Michael uh, Pollan became captain. He moved into, uh, into a captain spot, and uh, you do have to call him Captain Mike now, okay? <laughs> and, uh, but now, in our midst is one of the first doctors of occupational therapy in the state of Michigan. One is actually in the first class that graduated the Doctor of Occupational Therapy. And do we have to call him Captain Mike? Yes. Do you have to call her Dr. Michaela? Yes. <laughs> Congrats, that's a big deal. Any other big things happen in your life? No, nothing. Not a, like a wedding on Saturday, no. All right. And then, we've always got birthdays going around this place. She's trying to hide over there. Where she, oh, there she is trying to hide over there. Sheila, happy birthday. And she doesn't want you to sing her. But if you were turning 12, 12 years old, I'm sick. 12. It's a big deal, Jackson. It's a big number. It's a big number. <laughs> you can only count to 12. So that's it. You got to just stay right here. All right. So Jackson's 12. All right, Jackson. So my birthday present to you is I'm going to turn off my mic. 
and everybody else is going to sing to you, led by these guys behind us, and throw in Sheila, too. Yeah, I was gonna say, are we so we got Sheila, Sheila yeah. and Jackson. All right. Happy ready? birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jackson and Sheila. Happy birthday to you. Okay, so again, you're here on Family Worship Sunday, so the kids stay in a little bit longer. We take communion together, and you've already seen them bring us the announcements. So if you need a communion cup right now, or you need um, a sucker. Now, here's the thing on the suckers. You can, the suckers are really for the kids, but um, <laughs> some people do go. Some people do go for both. Um, so, so here's here's how we do communion around here as it relates um, to kids. Okay. So these kids, if you need a communion cup, just raise your hand, and they're going to come around each section. And if you need a sucker. Raise your hand, and Rosie's going to keep coming around and bringing those, bringing those to you. And um, while, while they're moving those around, let me say this. At Crossroads, we always say it's the parents. You know your kids, so you decide when you think your child is ready to take communion. If your child is more excited about the sucker than the communion, that's part, that could be a hint, okay, that they maybe aren't ready just yet. Um, now, here's the thing, though. If you want help with that, we have a class here where I meet with you as the parents and the kids, and we all meet together, and then we talk about what communion is and, and, what, it means, and what it means to take communion. So as we take communion... Right? We always prepare ourselves. We always prepare ourselves with prayer. So when we do Family Worship Sunday now, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to pray the Lord's Prayer together each time. And when we do, one section and one section only, we're going to have a pause. And in that pause, I'm first going to explain what that line of the prayer means and then I'm going to ask you, um, you know, to offer, offer up whatever that part of the prayer is. So here's the prayer. So today we're going to just stop after the word name. Then I'll explain. Then I'll invite you. And then we'll finish the prayer together. All right? So say that. Say up to name with me. Words are on the screen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Okay, hallowed be, hallowed be thy name. That's something we say every day, right? When you meet somebody on the street, hallowed be your name. What does that mean? That means we want God to be honored. And we honor God with how we love and how we care and how we embrace others in this world. And so the other way that we honor God is we recognize all the goodness that God has brought into this world. And so we call that praise. So if we're gonna not just say those words, but do those words, let's lift a, let's lift a word of praise, okay? So just do it like this, kids. And adults, you can do it too. But kids, raise your hand and tell me one thing you're thankful to God for. Well, Ellie, that hand just shot right up. What do you got? You're thankful for your house, yeah? Luce, your family. Arian, just family. Aria, what you got? Thankful for God. Yeah, me too. All right. Hey, adults want to help? <laughs> now, we're thankful for the Detroit Lions. It is before the first game of the season. I have faith. Right. You, you, or you may be being led into temptation. We'll find out. <laughs> May, what you got? Thankful for this world. Thank you, May. Todd, what you got? Thankful to be here today. 
Elaine. New grandbaby. New grandbaby. You got pics? <laughs> oh, no. But, okay, no, there are new grandbabies coming. All right. So, um, that's, we just hallowed the name of God. We just honor God for all that he has done in this world. So let's continue to pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And Brock, I didn't raise my hand, but I could really use a communion cup. Can you help me out, buddy? Thanks. <laughs> You're a good man, Brock. So as we, as we come to the table, right, what, what are we doing here? This, this is a chance to connect to God and connect with God's love and connect with God's goodness and connect with God's grace. The Apostle Paul says, when you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. When we proclaim Jesus as Lord, we're proclaiming him as God and we're proclaiming him as the God we follow. So when he calls us into love, we seek to be people of love. And when we proclaim his death until he comes, we're proclaiming everything that is, right? It's not just his death. It's his rising again. It's his invitation into new life. And for the times, and kids, you know this, I know this, for the times we feel like we've messed up and nobody could ever love us again and it's just blah and we start getting down on ourselves and beating ourselves up it is the reminder that god's love is yours and it will not leave you ever 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 right and so we're going to pray right now and in this prayer i'm going to leave a little pause and in that pause, I'm going to invite you just to confess. What that means is you say, okay, God, these are the things I kind of messed up on this week. And hear me now. Don't confess out of fear. The scriptures tell us perfect love drives out all fear because fear has to do with punishment. Don't confess out of fear. God loves you. God came for you. God welcomes you into the family. But I confess out of longing because I long to be all that God called me to be and, and to be the person who God called me to be. And, and I don't always do that. And again, it's not beating ourselves up. It's rising again with Christ and going on to better days. So join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you and we thank you. And so... You know, you call us to love you and love each other, and sometimes we mess it up, but we know your love is still there. So in the silence of our hearts, we just want to confess those places where we're kind of, we feel like we're missing it. And we know you still love us, but we, we, we confess out of this longing to be who you called us to be. Maybe it's a kid who I see at lunch, and I know... No one's welcoming them in, and I think I'm supposed to welcome them in, but I, I just don't, I haven't had the courage yet. Maybe it's that coworker, or maybe it's that neighbor. You're like, I know I'm supposed to love, and I'm struggling, help me. So I'd invite you now in the silence of your hearts to confess those places where you're like me, and you don't always love God the way you're called to, and you don't always love your neighbor the way you're called to. I invite you to do that now. And Lord, for your love that comes, that welcomes, that embraces us, that saves us and leads us, we thank you and we praise you. And we humbly ask you to bless this bread and to bless the cup. Let it remind us of your love, but so much more than that. 
Let it fill us with your love and connect us with your love so that we can shine your light in all the places you would take us. In Jesus' holy name, we pray. And all God's people said, amen. And we remember that on the night before he died, our Lord and Savior himself took bread and broke it. He gave it to his loved ones. He gave it to his friends. He said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This, this is my body given for you. Do this in memory of me. Take and eat the body of Christ broken for you. And after supper, he took a cup. Again, he gave thanks and praise. He gave it to his disciples, his loved ones, his friends. He said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is my blood shed for you, shed for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. And if you join me once more in prayer, Father, for this love, we thank you and we praise you. Help us to walk in your love and help us to bring that love every place we go. In Jesus' name, amen. So um, usually at this point, uh, we would dismiss the kids, but we are going to now help Ms. Shannon set up her uh, lesson. So of course, the first week we do this, it's a super long Bible reading, but it's Miss Shannon's Bible reading for today. And the one and only Lucy is going to come on up. <laughs> and she is going to read to us from the book of Exodus. So, Miss Shannon, tell us what your Bible point is today. God, God does not want us to get hurt. So when we, see, when we see in God's words, right, commandments, ideas on how to live, he's doing that out of a place of love, right? And so these are the commandments that were given to the ancient Israelites. You ready? Yeah. Go. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of their parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but on the seventh day is Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor any animals, nor any foreigner residing in your town. For six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that's in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore did God bless the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother so you may live long in the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant or his ox, your donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain and smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance and said to Moses, Speak to us yourself and we will listen, but do not have God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. God has come to test you so that the fear of God will be with you and keep you from sinning.
Testament fear of God, is the word fear there means awe, right? To stand in awe of God and to stand in awe of his beauty and his goodness. And one of the things Miss Shannon does such a great job with when she's with the kids back there is helping them see the beauty and the awe of God. So Miss Shannon's going to come up right now. And for those of you uh, who are old-time Crossroadians, the mystery box is going to make an appearance. <laughs> right? Is it? I, is your bro here? Oh, is he, is he in the building? Okay. Yeah. All right, if you don't know what the mystery box is, for those of you uh, who have never been here when we've done the mystery box, inside, the kid puts something inside, and then we, they pull it out, and I have to connect what's in the box to Miss Shannon's Bible point for the day. But then, kids got to do the same thing, and it's me versus the kids, okay? So, um, i tell you what. Um, let's, let's wait, do this, uh, Jen, going to call an audible. Um, so kids are going to stay in for one extra, uh, one extra song here. So give, um, let's do the, your first song, your kingdom song that you're going to teach us today. Okay. All right. We've got a new one for you this morning, so this gives you a little chance to learn it. Do you want to have We'll stand and... Sure, why don't you stand? Mm-hmm. There's Miss Shannon, though. Your kingdom is simple, as simple as love. You welcome the children, you stop for the one. We want to see people the way Jesus does. Your kingdom is simple.
rivers what you call a treasure this world calls a So for anticipation, the mystery box will make its return next month, (laughs) all right? And kids, uh, the one and only Miss Shannon, oh, she's got Michaela with her, so it's going to be a good day back there. So kids, you can hang, you can go hang out with her. Uh, Sixth through ninth grade, you got Pastor Ben at the back door. He is waiting for you. And everybody else, you can stay uh, rising and lift your voices. Stay Rising? Risen. Stay risen. (laughs) Indeed. (laughs) You were the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord most high. You hid in glory. You 
Heavenly Father, this morning we recognize your love and your grace and your goodness and your wisdom and your way. And that's all I want us to hear this morning, your wisdom, your way. So if my words get in the way, just let them go away so your light would shine in this time and place. In Jesus' holy name we pray and all God's people said, amen. You can grab a seat. So uh, a, a couple of things before we uh, dive into the message. First one is this. Um, so as we come back now from summer and we do this thing where we try to, you know, do this with one service. Um, I'm just going to ask those of you who can, please park on the gravel parking lot. And let's leave spaces up front um, for visitors. That'll allow us to, you know, maybe, maybe keep the one service thing uh, going for a little bit. Second thing is... Um, I know, because people, because when we split it up, then you get the kids in one service, and people like to see the kids, so it, it's good for us to be together. Second thing is, um, so, you know, we kicked up Family Communion to Family Worship Sunday, and so um, Kelly is going to be heading up Family Communion Sunday. Um, Kelly is married to Captain Mike, so we are going to make her director of Family uh, Worship Sunday, but she's captain, and... Uh, you just call her Captain Kelly. And, um, but anyways, if you want your kids to be a part of that, Kelly, just stand up so people who don't know you can see you. Just see Kelly uh, after the service. And I think most of the parents uh, know who Kelly is. But um, so that, uh, you know, we can, we can get your kids involved with that. So we come this morning. It's really, there's two opposites as we kick off uh, kick off the message. Uh, let me just say one, one, one more thing. So, so when we're talking about this, uh, Jen, uh, our pastor, you know, our worship pastor and Dave, our other co-pastor, you know, we were talking about family communion Sunday. We're like, okay, when we do family worship Sunday, I got to do a nursing home message. Okay. And so a nursing home message, we used to do the messages at the nursing home. We've actually just started now doing messages over at Brighton Center uh, for recovery. Uh, we do that, you know, a couple of times a month. But when you're in those settings, you do them short, especially at the nursing home, because you go long and they're out. All right. So, so the message on Family Worship Sunday will be a little bit shorter. So we're into, uh, you know, we're into a worship, uh, a nursing home uh, sermon this morning. Some of you will like that. Some of you, you know, will like, uh, I like a little bit longer, but just once a month. So, but let's talk about these two opposites on this day. Like we come and, and, you know, you see the kids up here. I mean, I hear Lucy, you know, reading and I'm just, right, like, and, and the kids coming up, you know, and Anissa welcoming us in to worship and just, you know, Trevor over here on the, on the keys, you know, a, a grace planner, guitar, it's just beautiful, right? So on one hand, we have 
like the, all the beauty that this world can be. And when we stand here 21 years after, you know, the towers are struck. And in that moment, we saw the ugliness that the world can be. And, and that's the world, right, that, that we live in. And, and that's the world that we're called to minister in and love in and bring, you know, goodness into. And, and so, like, you know, we can all do the thing where we, we remember where we were when, right? And so, um, we're, Joanne and I were, uh, we had been coming to the church for a few years but had made the transition to, to doing the staff thing. And the person making a transition to staff at that same time was, was Shannon. And so, um, and it was just like it is now, right? Like I was the pastor over the, the children's ministry. So Shannon and I are on the phone, but Joanne and I had just moved from Redford out to here, you know, to be by the church. And we had no TV. Our TV was back in Redford, you know, how you leave your furniture in the house, right? And I'm on the phone with Shannon, and we're talking about, you know, the upcoming Sunday, like we would do. And she's like, are you watching TV? And which, of course, I wasn't, right? Um, and then she told me what was going on. And in that moment, see, there's an important part about that moment. What happens in that moment the temptation in that moment is to get what we want through power, through violence, through powering up. That's what those guys were trying to do, right? Let's power up. That's how we, that's how we get ahead in this world. But in Jesus, it's actually the exact opposite. What Jesus, the constant temptation in front of Jesus as he walked on this earth was to, was to be political, to be powerful, to, to, seize, to seize the government. That was the expectation of the people, of the Jewish people, that the Messiah would come and the Messiah would kick out the Romans the Messiah would rule and be that powerful military king. That's what they were expecting. What they got was Jesus Christ. Who, who I, I love, I, I, I love this song. You know, we, we're, we're talking about kingdom. Jen goes out, our worship pastor goes out and she finds a song about the kingdom, Right? kingdom works in reverse. It doesn't work the way we think it's supposed to work, right? So, so what we're going to do now between now and Memorial Day, and no, it, it won't be <laughs> nine months of kingdom messages, but I'm pretty close. Got a feeling you're here, love God, love people a couple of times. All right, so, but our theme this year is the kingdom of God. And what does it mean to live into the kingdom of God? And so in Matthew's, uh, in Matthew's gospel, we have the very famous Sermon on the Mount, right? And right in the middle of that, Jesus says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Now we're going to go over the Sermon on the Mount in great detail, not till 2023, but uh, it's coming. We'll do the, do the whole thing over, over eight weeks. So we'll get to that verse. But for now... We want to, in this first series, Dave and I, we want to bring you just an overview of the kingdom. So today, I want to talk about the king. What, what does it mean when we say that Jesus is the king? So we go to the book of Colossians, and the first part here, I just, I just want to read it to you. The first 14 verses of, of the book of, of Colossians here. Now, the reason why I want to read this to you is because I want you to hear the heart of the writer. The writer is Paul. And Paul is writing to a little church. It was probably what we would call today a house church. 
So people from the town of, of Colossae would come to this house and they would worship God and they would be the people of God together and they'd bring God's love into the world together. So, so Paul begins, right? Grace and peace to you from God our Father. Now just, again, hear how he longs for them, hear how he loves them, hear how he encourages them. And let that encouragement be with us, right? In here, in this time and place. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus. And of the love you have for all God's people. The faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven. And about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. You learned it from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf and who also told us of your love in the spirit. Here is love for them. He sees how they love. He sees how they care for each other. He sees how they care for the world around them. May we be those people, right, who love like that and who care like that. And then the encouragement is, hey, man, let's keep going. For this reason, since the day we have heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks for the Father, to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. These are the words of our God and King and we are thankful for them for in them we find true and everlasting life. So he says, you're doing it. You're loving. You're bringing your love into the world and you're bringing your love into the community. Now keep going and keep growing. And as we keep going and we keep growing, right? We put our focus on the king. Right? If, if we're in a kingdom, then there's a king. And how the king is, we're called to be. So he continues on now. In, in the book of Colossians, uh, the next verse. This tells us who our king is. The son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him, all things hold together. Pause, hold on to that. Don't forget that. In him, all things hold together in Jesus Christ. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. The son is the image of the invisible God. If Jesus is the face of God, then God is love. Because what do we see Jesus doing on this earth? Loving, caring, welcoming, embracing all the people who were left behind, 
all the people who were those people. He embraces. The son is the image of the invisible God. And watch. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. So the first thing that we can say about our king is that our king creates. And he creates in love and goodness. And he invites us into that. So first he's creator. Then, for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things. All things, everything is reconciled to God through Jesus Christ, right? Whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. So, he creates, he redeems, and he renews, and we keep going. And he is the head of the body, the church, So he leads, he creates, redeems, and renews us, and he leads us. And in all those things, he does those in love. The very first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, what do we read, right? He creates, and it's good. And then he creates some more, and it's good. Then he creates a little bit more, and it's good, and beautiful, and right, And then, right, for God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his one and only son out of love, right? He redeems us in love. And then what do we, what do we hear? The, the second from the last book of the Bible, right? Revelation chapter 21, what does he say? Behold, I am making all things new. He's making us new. He's renewing us, right? And then he leads in love. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened. This is what, this is who this is to. Come to me, all you who are burnt out on religion. Come to me, all of you who are are just like beaten down by the rules, Come to me, all of you who think that the world has passed you by and there's no place for you. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle in spirit and you will find rest for your souls. He creates in love, it's good. He redeems in love. And he leads us in love. That's our God. And and he calls us then, if that's our king, and we're in the kingdom, we're supposed to look like the king. And we're supposed to live in that kingdom. And don't say, what is the kingdom of God here? Is the kingdom of God there? For the kingdom of God is among you. The plural you. The plural you. All of us. This is the kingdom of God. When we love and we care and we bring the love of God into the world, right? That's the kingdom. That's God's love coming into the world. And look, the English language stinks on this one, okay? Sorry, English language, no offense. We, you know, we're the, you know, it's on the wall. Thank you for putting it on the wall. Um, right, it's on the wall. Love God, love people, right? It's always up there. And, and so in English, what do we do with love? Love is this sappy thing, right? Oh, I feel good, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. Greater love has no one than this. Then they lay down their lives for their friends. 
That's the kind of love that Jesus is talking about. The love that doesn't demand its own way. The love that sees the hurting person and lays down its life for that person. See, you know, our, in our, what we get with love in English is Hallmark cards. What we get from love from the word of God is you're called to lay down your life. You're called to love. You're called to be there for the people who nobody else will be there for. You're called to the least of these. You're called to the people who are hurting and broken. And you're called to bring the love of God. I mean, that's the call of the church, man. That's it. When he says, take up your cross daily and follow me. Die to yourself and live for love. Die to your need to be right. Die, your, die to your need to have it all. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Because then you're really going to live. And all those things that you thought were so good and so important, you're going to find, wait a minute. I find my life in losing my life and giving it in service for others. That's the way of the kingdom. That's the way of Jesus. And so, we, we always want to make, and I'm, this is for next week. This is Pastor Dave for next week. We'll talk about how we get in, right? So if there's a kingdom, what's the entrance to look like? But, you know, we always want to make it about, well, what do you believe? Do you believe these, you know, certain things? And you say yes, and then, okay. But if we listen to Jesus, he's like, come follow me. Come follow me as I go out and I minister. Come follow me as I go out and heal. Come follow me as I love Come follow me as I teach people about, about God's love. Right? Come follow. So, you know, we got to take this stuff. We got to live it out in the world, right? We got to live it out in this world in this time in this place. As we come now, you know, I, I, I call it the silly season, and the problem with the silly season is it never ends now, right? But, you know, as we head into an election season, right? Silly season. And, and as it is every, every time, right? Abortion will be the big topic. We'll be talking about it all the time. And, and what people will do is, They'll throw sound bites back at each other. And we'll yell across the divide. And the temptation to us will be the same temptation that Jesus had. Jump into the political. Right? And use your power. Power up. And so if we can throw out the sound bites and we can see what's really going on and learn how to love like Jesus loves, some of us will say, and we'll say correctly, right? Like, this is a problem of human sexuality. This is a problem of people not loving their neighbor well. Right? I mean, that's, as you've heard me say before, right? When we think about God and sexuality, God's rules around sexuality are, are in service of loving your neighbor and caring for your neighbor. And so we'll say, well, you know, if people didn't sleep around, wouldn't have this problem. Okay, of course that's true. Of course that's true. And, and, and yet there's more, Right? So that's one part of the problem. The other part of the problem in our country is that 70% of women who, who have abortions, 
we would say are low income. 44% live below the poverty line before they get pregnant. And now they're, they live below the poverty line and now they're pregnant. Do, do, we, do we have the courage to come alongside them and love them and help them so that they can see another way? I mean, I, I have a sister who, because of serious mental health issues, uh, has had to give two children up for adoption. And, um, and because of her serious mental health issues, even though I come from a big family, it would not have worked for one of us, uh, us siblings to have raised those kids because she wouldn't mentally she wouldn't have been able to handle it. And the, it was it was churches that came alongside her and loved her and care. I mean, as her family, we did too. But the church stepped up and helped her place those kids and took care of her and made sure that, you know, the, all the medical expenses were paid for. I have a brother who, I, my, my sister had two, two boys. I have a brother who adopted two boys. And he did that out of a place of faith, you know? And yet, because of the severe... One kid, one of my nephews is like seriously one of the greatest pianists you will ever hear. Like he wins competitions all over the world. He's finishing up his PhD in, uh, I don't know, piano, I guess. It's just like, you don't, I know he does more than that. Okay, I'm serious. You listen to this kid, it's just beautiful. It just takes you away. He was adopted by my brother. My other nephew sits in the Florida State prison system where he's doing life in prison for murder. And, uh, and it's because of all the brokenness and all the trauma that he experienced before he came into my brother's home that he just, he, 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 he couldn't get past it. And my, and, and my brother to his credit, you know, he stays connected with that son. He loves that son. His heart's broken. But that doesn't mean he doesn't talk to him. Doesn't mean he doesn't show up at visits. Doesn't mean he doesn't continue to love his son. I, I, I look, if we're, gonna, if we're gonna do this thing, right, right as the church, we need to, number one, not throw stones at the people, right, who, who, get, who get caught, right, pregnant. They get caught pregnant, and we all want to throw, see, you're promiscuous, you're not thought, right, and we want to throw stones. Our Lord and Savior, our King is Jesus Christ. He doesn't give us that option. He took that option away from us. He said, let you who are out sin cast the first stone. So, so that option's gone. And hear me on this, okay? I'm not saying that laws aren't important, things are important. It's not going to change, guys. It doesn't matter what happens with the law. It's not going to change. Yeah, making drugs illegal, right? That changed all. Like we don't have any more drug problem now. Or maybe we do. This is hard stuff. And we're heart people. So we got to be the people who love. Now, let me make it real practical, all right? There's grandparents in this room and in this church. You're, you're making it possible for your children to bring kids into the world. Because I see you with them. And I know what you do. You watch them so that your, your kid can go to work and you're there and you care for them. There's one there and there's one there, right? 
who, there, there's other grandparents in this room, right, whose kids are struggling, and those grandparents are there, and they're loving those kids, and they're, and they're helping those kids to thrive even when things are difficult. I see you and I thank you. It's beautiful. That's what, that's what it takes, you guys. It takes love. It takes being in the lives of children. And yes, it takes, little self-promotional plug for a second. It takes not being annoyed when the kids are in here, right? Because when they're in here, what they see is we count, we matter. And what we say as a community is they count, they matter, and then that's how we live our lives. There are people in this, in this church family who have taken up the difficult work of foster care and adoption. Good for you. Thank you. Keep doing it. I mean, I, I got I to I gotta talk about my wife on this one for just a second, okay? Because, okay, whether you know this or not, we're foster parents, okay? Thanks to Joanne, okay? Um, but the reason why we are is there's these two little foster boys and the one's been bouncing around the system and, and there's a new worker every month. And so every time Joanne calls, she's got to, you know, got to say, hey, I want to talk to Manuel. Well, who are you? So we got licensed. So when she calls, she can say, I'm a foster parent. And then we go to these meetings and she says, I want to be a foster grandparent. And the workers look at her like, we have no category. <laughs> who, what, what, is, what is this foster grandparent that you speak of? Well, it's me. I'm here. I am not leaving this kid. This kid is in my life and I want to be in this kid's life. So somehow they added her to this little boy's record so now when he has a court hearing the guardian ad litem shows up the right and whose face pops up on the zoom joanne's and that kid knows that there's somebody in this world who loves him and is always going to love him and is always going to care for him we, we can deal with this abortion thing by throwing sound bites at each other trust me it won't solve the problem or we can deal with it by being the people that Jesus Christ calls us to be. By loving, by doing the foster care thing, doing the adoption thing, doing the grandparent thing. You grandparents in here rock. I see you bring your kids to church. I know what you're doing during the week where you're there. I mean, you got a kid with you, you got your grandkid with you all week, and then you show up on a Wednesday night and you pull weeds at the church. Rock on, and thank you. What, what the political process wants to do is get us into a shouting match and pull us apart. Now, I got to quote my buddy Richard Rohr, Father Richard Rohr, who runs the Center for Action and Contemplation. And, and Father Richard says it like this. The best criticism of the bad is the practice of the better is the practice of the good it's not about shouting back and forth it's about loving on kids the kids who are here and the kids who we want to come here so so we got to love on we got to love on young families we got to care for young families you got to, you, 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 I know your grandparents are doing it, man. And Shannon does it with her, you know, movie nights and her quest parties, right? So that people can go out and have a break. We got to be supporting families and loving on them. We got to be the people of God. The world is going to try to split us apart. Don't let them do it. Because this is how they know that we follow Jesus Christ by how we love each other. Especially when we don't agree on the, on the, the food fight, also known as politics. 
Let's love each other. Let's love the families in this community. You, I mean, I see so many grandparents. I'm looking at these grandparents who I've seen take care of their grandkids, right? I mean, you're all over the place. You keep doing it. It's beautiful. Let's love. Let's be the people of God. Because when that light shines, when that love shines, when we don't get caught into the, the food fight and we just, we just love him, then the world will know who the king is. And he doesn't have an R after his name and he doesn't have a D after his name. He is Jesus the Christ, which means the anointed one, which means the Messiah, which means the king. Let's go follow him. God bless you all. Have a good week.